We'll begin with the opening statement, and we'll take questions from Coach. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, obviously excited you know, for another opportunity to compete, um, for our group to improve and get better. Um, going against another you know, program that I have familiarity with. Um, I know Coach Golish. Um, you know, I, I know the toughness um, that um, he coaches with, and I know the detail that he emphasizes with his team. I have a lot of respect for Coach Orlando. The defensive coordinator is very accomplished. He's very well respected in our profession. And so I know it'll be another tremendous challenge for us. And uh, like I said, I have familiarity with the program um, and the, the pride that they have and the coaches on their staff and the quality of coaches that they are. So be another uh, big challenge for us and looking for us to improve um, from week one to week two. Fire away. Okay, coach, go back right side, Jamie. Hey coach, what do you see from Ryan Williams' no debut like that won't get to his head? Well, I mean, uh, he certainly has received a lot of attention, you know, throughout his recruitment um, and even prior to, to him actually playing the game here. And so, um, the thing that I would say is he's been the same person, um, you know, since the day we met him. Um, he's always uh, he loves football. He loves to work. He's willing to be coached. And so, um, you know, I think he's hungry um, to go continue to build off of what he did in the first game. And so I don't envision that being an issue. And um, he's a great kid, loves football, and loves to be coached. And so, um, yeah, we're excited to try to help him get better. And I know Coach Chef's excited to coach him all. Stay on the right side of Matt. Uh, I can kind of guess your answer if I ask for an injury uh, status update on Caden Proctor. But what do you think of Elijah stepping into that spot? I thought he did a nice job. You know, I think um, you know we have confidence in the guys in that room. Um, you have to be ready when you're called upon. And, you know, Coach Cap does an awesome job, as, you know, you have to, as you, you cross-train. You know, you train guys at multiple spots, left, right, inside, outside, because you want to make sure that you get your, your best five guys out there, um, no matter what the circumstances are. And so it's not the first time Critch has played left tackle. You know, obviously he's had a lot of reps at that previously. He hasn't had as much, you know, lately. Um, but uh, I thought he did a nice job. You know, he showed toughness. For him, you know, unexpectedly to have to go in there, but he did a nice job. Jump to the last five in the front row to Katie. Uh, you just talked about improvising. Just what was it like for you on Saturday night? You've been preparing all season to be in the box and had to come down to the field at the last minute and just dealing with that situation. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a first, you know, for all of us. Um, you know, I've called games before on the field. You know, I don't think that was, um, but normally when you're going to do that, you're preparing for it. You know, you might mark up she a little bit different, but um, I think in those moments you're just trying to provide calmness to the people around you, um, let the players know that it's just fine, you know, um, and you just adjust, you adapt, you know, you don't, you prepare so much for, for all the different, you know, things that may come up in the game, but you also recognize there's going to be times where you have to adjust and adapt and be flexible. Um, you don't necessarily think you're going to be going up and down in the box to the field, you know, um, but it was just what was required at that time, and so you just do it, you know, and we all have a job to do um, each and every day. You try to do the very best you can in that role, um, just like we asked the players, and so that was really all there was to it. Um, it was really more so, you know, where, was it going to get fixed and so just stay put, or no, it's not, and come down, and so that was really more the conversation is, like, how long was it before the headset's going to be out, and could you just kind of wait it out up in the box until fixed it, but obviously we felt that they'd be down maybe uh, longer than they were, and so just hit the elevator, went down a couple floors, and walked out of the stadium. I thought the fans were great. It was rocking. It was, you know, so all good. Uh, back on the right, Ryan. Coach, I know you weren't part of the team last year, but a lot of people were against USF. What did you see in that game? How much are you using that game? Are you kind of saying this is a new team, obviously a new quarterback that's playing on your side? Well, I think there's lessons learned, um, you know, from everybody for everybody on you know previous experiences. Um, but it's certainly, you know, that was early in the season last year. This is a new group of players. Um, they have a new group, you know, of players of their own, and so um, you know, similar coaches, obviously for them, you know. So I'm sure they'll be watching the film on things that they felt, you know, for, versus certain people that maybe they had success with, and we're evaluating that. Um, there was a lot of film after that game as well for us to digest and try to, you know, predict how we think that they're going to try to play us. And so I think you, you take it all into account. Um, but you also know that every game is a new game. You know, every 
every season is a new season. And so, um, you know, what has happened in the past has no impact on what will happen Saturday. It will be ultimately about the team that plays the best. And so that's what we're really focused on. Go back over to the left side, Steven. Obviously, Coach would love to have seen more, but just the efficiency of Milrow in his first game, can you talk about that there? I thought he did a nice job. You know, I, I think um, obviously he was very explosive. You know, um, and you know the thing that that uh, I enjoyed or I was proud of him was just the communication. You know, between series, what he saw. I thought he saw the game very clearly. Um, you know, we talked about all week with the group, not just Jalen, but the whole team is improve as the game goes on. You know, and the communication that occurs between series to try to um, just get better see how they're going to try to play you, be able to adjust, be able to adapt. And so I was really proud of that. I thought he was calm. Um, you know, he, was, he was poised. Um, I thought he was competitive. I thought he showed toughness. Um, you know, it wasn't you know, a ton of snaps. Obviously, there was um, you know, some short scoring drives. And so, um, but I was proud of how he played. And, and I know he'll tell you there's still room for growth, which is exciting. And this is really the fun part for coaches is that you go play a game and you see what you need to work on. Think certain areas where you think the guy's got it, and then it shows up in the game, and maybe it's not quite the habit that you want. And so um, we're excited to get back on the grass tomorrow. Go to Mike here on the right side of the room. You had uh, two other quarterbacks get into the game too, a Ty and Dylan. Just what did you see from them? Obviously, Dylan didn't throw a pass, but just the operation. I thought they were clean. I thought they communicated well. Um, you know, by and large, made the right decisions. There's a couple that you know we'd like to learn from, but. Um, you know, that was the first experience for me with all the guys in our room as far as seeing them compete and being out on the grass, you know, in a game environment. And I was proud of them. I thought they, um, like I said, they communicated well. They had poise. Um, they led their groups. You know, they moved the ball when they were in there. And ultimately, that's their job as quarterbacks. They used their legs. I thought they played football, you know, and uh, it was good to see. I was happy that they both got a chance to get in the game. Go to Charlie on the right. Going back to Jalen, when you're watching film with him, how did you see him kind of progress over the course of the season after this game last year? So the second game. I wouldn't. I mean, you know, I wasn't here for that. You know, and so it's it's a little bit difficult for me to kind of give you a big picture. You know, on on what that looked like. You know, that was I wasn't here. You know, I wasn't a part of that journey for him. You know, certainly we've had conversations about lessons that he's learned along his journey, just like I've told him about things that I've grown. You know, and. When I was a player, as a coach, you name it. I mean, that's the type of relationship that you're always trying to build and create um, so that you have that, that relationship built on trust and you can communicate about things um, that you've been through, you know, and how you got where you where you are. So um, it's hard for me to say specifically as far as, you know, what how we improved or, you know, what that looks like. You know, we're just focused on just trying to be better, you know, this week than we were last week. And that's really where our, all of our attention is right now. Uh, we have time for a few more questions. We'll jump on the left side to Tony. Back to the elevator improvision. How long did it take you to get from the coaching box to the elevator? And obviously, you guys were able to learn that while they were while they had the ball. Do you have a plan in place for if that was to happen? If you guys had the ball, what what the, if you're trying to get down there? Is there somebody? Does the board step in and make the calls, or how does that work? Um. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't say we spend a ton of time on the headsets going down and me getting stuck in the elevator. Um, it wasn't that long. Most people were in seats, you know, so there wasn't too many people on the elevator. Um, but we'll be okay, I guess. I mean, we'll be prepared for it next time if it happens. I get stuck in the elevator. Let's go uh, Chase on the right side here. Kind of piggybacking off an earlier question here about Jalen, but obviously it's pretty unusual for a starting quarterback to only throw nine balls and just score 63 points. Um, he was efficient for sure, but but just from an evaluation standpoint, did you watch film and think, man, I, I wish I could sink my teeth into more than nine throws here? No, I mean, we're just trying to win. You know, that's really all we're focused on. Uh, and I think there was lots to learn from, you know, even in the plays that he had. Um, and that's true. You know, we're mindful of that with all, not just Jalen, but all the guys as you're trying to get snaps in the game environment. Um, and so we were mindful of that. You know, obviously we uh, just had some short scoring drives. And so um, not just him, but a lot of the guys didn't have as many snaps as maybe you would anticipate, in, you know, in the game. So, um, no, I mean, I thought he 
play great and there's things to work on. You know, there's reads, footworks that he can clean up. Um, he sees that, he acknowledges that, he's excited about the opportunity to work and, and continue to grow and get better. I'm excited for the chance to coach him. So, um, no, I was not you know, disappointed in the fact that he only had nine attempts and just kind of how the game played out. Uh, finish up with Nick here on the right. Yeah, so when you were able to use the helmet comms, uh, how was that experience, the first game action with that? Um, I thought by and large it was clean. I think there was some communication that we could do better um, collectively, um, certainly starting with me and then through the staff and through the players. I think that's pretty typical of most first games where, um, you know, there's a moment here or there where maybe you didn't, you know, quite communicate as efficiently as you'd like or move as quickly as you would like. Um, but by and large, I thought the guys did a nice job. Um, I think we had one false start, you know, for an opener. Um, we had a couple holding calls, but. Um, you know, we had to burn a timeout early in the first half, um, which was, um, you know, you'd like not to have to do that. And so there's reasons for those things. There's things that you address both as a staff and as the players on, on, you know, just trying to eliminate those things moving forward. But for the most part, for our first game, I thought it was relatively clean from a communication standpoint. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Full time.